In this video, we're going to be having a look at Matter and some other smart home protocols. Make sure you stick around, and if you like what you see, hit that subscribe button below and keep an eye out for more videos. Hi, I'm Will from Will Surrey to Check, and today we're going to be having a look at smart home protocols and then going on to Matter, which technically isn't a protocol. Um, we're going to have a look at what smart home protocols are, uh, and then we're going to kind of see where Matter comes into it. Now this isn't going to be a video going into all of the tech specs of which one you should choose, it'll just be a bit of a journey as to the different options out there and how Matter came across and why Matter doesn't really matter, or at least it doesn't yet. And I'll just give you my thoughts on it all. So let's get going. Now, if you want to watch a video with all the tech specs comparing all of these, then go check out Automate Your Life. He's got a great video that covers all of the detail you could ever possibly want to know about smart home protocols. But we're just going to start with the basics. What is a protocol? Well, a protocol is basically a set of rules that allows devices to talk to each other. They know, it's basically a language that the devices can speak over the airwaves uh, so they can listen to each other and understand each other. It's as simple as that. Uh, all these protocols kind of run on software, but obviously they need like an antenna of some form to transmit and receive signals. Um, so they do require hardware, but that hardware is quite similar, if not exactly the same, across different protocols. Now, if you want to control your device remotely, then that device needs to connect to the internet, obviously. And if you want to control your device with your phone, then the device somehow needs to get its protocol talking to your phone, and your phone can only talk on Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. So if the device doesn't have that, then it's going to need some form of hub to kind of translate from one of the other protocols onto those ones so your phone can talk to it. Some devices can talk directly to each other via their protocol, but often, if there's any logic involved, that might need to be stored on some form of hub. What I mean by logic is anything kind of in the form of scheduling or automations or something where there has to be some sort of conditions or something happens when something else happens kind of thing. Uh, so, for example, Hue light bulbs, Hue light switches, they're both Zigbee, but when you press a switch, it doesn't just tell a bulb to go off. It actually goes to the hub saying, I've been pressed, and then the hub goes, OK, let's turn on the bulb. It's as simple as that. Now, if we look at the spectrum, most protocols use the 2.4 gigahertz bandwidth to communicate. Uh, so hardware is, as I said, the same across devices. But there are some protocols that use different wavelengths and frequencies, and we will come across them. So. Alliances. Alliances and standards. And that is where we have a bit of fun, isn't it? Because the Zigbee Alliance was formed, you know, a long time ago uh, to maintain the Zigbee standard. And their aim is to provide customer with the ultimate flexibility, mobility and ease of use. So they're just basically trying to get everything to work with everything else. Great. Sounds like a perfect idea. There weren't many other standards at the time. So Introducing Zigbee just means you've got something that then can be used and can be used by everyone in the same way and will be will be interoperable. Members, of course, include all of the big companies. We've got Amazon, Google, Apple, Signify, SmartThings, Comcast, to name a few. And Zigbee is now very prominent in the smart home with hubs featured on Echo and Google devices. The problem is Zigbee isn't always interoperable. There are some features that are available kind of if you stick to the one brand, but not if you get a generic brand. For example, your Hue light bulbs, they're run on Zigbee. Your Hue hub is Zigbee. But if you have a, a generic Zigbee light bulb, you can connect it to your Hue, Hue hub and control the lights and all that. But you can't do cool things like add it to an entertainment area. So it's kind of there. It's kind of interoperable. But actually, someone's decided that we want a bit of corporate greed, we want our money, we want people to come back to us, so we're going to not let you have all of the features, so we're not really interoperable. 
They have recently rebranded as the Connectivity Standards Alliance, and this allows them to use more standards as, as well as Zigbee. They're, they're claiming that Zigbee's not going anywhere, but they are the leading kind of producer, founder, creator of Matter. Now, Matter was formerly known as Project Chip, Project Chip being connected home over IP. And that was set up by a number of big companies, Apple, Google, Amazon, Signify, SmartThings, Comcast. Hmm, I've heard this before. And their aim was to standardize connections around the, hot, the smart home and improve interoperability. Hmm, I feel like we've heard this before. We have heard this before. It was Zigbee. Alas, here we are trying again. Anyway, Project Chip, now called Matter, is there to try and connect everything together. And what I need to kind of be clear on is Matter is not a protocol. Matter is kind of an application layer on top of the protocol or multiple protocols. Matter is going to be using Thread, it's going to be using Wi-Fi, it's going to be using Bluetooth. And we don't really know what that means. Um, there aren't any Matter devices out yet. They're hopefully coming at the end of this year, if not next year, but who knows really. Um, but it's basically a way, in theory, that all devices can talk to other devices and you're not, and you're not going to be tied into an ecosystem or anything like that. It does have a number of cool features. Its certification is on the blockchain, which means if you certify your product as Matter, it'll always be Matter. And, but you can use the blockchain for companies to provide over the air updates to your devices. And it doesn't matter what you've kind of connected them to. So hopefully it's going to get rid of hundreds of apps. Hopefully it'll get rid of hundreds of different ecosystems that don't quite link together. Um, another feature is multi admin which is where you connect it to your thread network or your matter network, and then it appears in your, in your Google, in your Amazon, in your whatever kind of smart home network protocol thing, ecosystem you're using, which sounds cool, but actually sounds like it already exists. I have Hue light bulbs. My Hue light bulbs are in Amazon. My Hue light bulbs are in Google. My Hue light bulbs are in HomeKit. My Hue light bulbs are in Home Assistant, to name a few. So what, what Matter will provide by with its multi-admin, I don't really know. And that's kind of why I don't think Matter really matters yet. We can't do anything about it. It's not going to be out until end of this year, absolute earliest. Uh, but real, realistically, it's going to be next year. And even then, by the time you've got it on mass, it's going to be the year after. So it's 2023 before we can actually consider it properly. You know, there might be some cool features of matter that come out. We don't really know what matter is yet. We don't really know how powerful matter can be yet or what it will actually look like to a consumer. Um, but, and until we do, matter doesn't matter. And I would strongly suggest that you don't kind of hold off investing in your smart home, waiting for matter to appear and be an all powerful God over everything. Cause I don't think it will be, it might become that. I think if everything goes well down the line, then matter may matter, matter may matter. Um, but matter doesn't yet matter. And if corporate greed takes over in the same way that it did with Zigbee, then matter will never matter. And there's always going to be bits of this, bits of that. And, you know, I'd love to have a, a one size fits all, a unified system, a unified network. It'd be amazing, but I can't see that coming anytime soon. And there is a lovely comic strip that I've seen lately, uh, which I will post up here. And it's so true. You can't have one standard to rule them all. And obviously, because it's being so slow, there aren't going to be many devices that actually work with it. For example, you know, they're going to launch with light bulbs and with sensors, but they're not going to be launching with things like cameras um, because they don't know how to do that yet. So you're still, you know, three years down the line, you still don't have any matter compatible cameras. Maybe in five years you might, but by that point, technology has changed so much. 
there's no point in waiting. Um, so there we go. That is why I don't think matter matters. Yet, at least. Make sure you hit that subscribe button below and click the bell icon to find out more about my smart tech and how you can build yourself the ultimate smart home.